Welcome back. Mm. Mm. Trying to remember what happened last time. Uh, last time when we met Diana, right? Um, I'm gonna say right. Never say that nothing will happen before the day is over. I avoided the, talking about the ride back home yesterday, saying that the ride was a one-time only thing. I'll be riding with you guys from now on, and to and from school. The girl seemed very happy. We entered the school quickly, gathered our things from our lockers, and headed to the class. There were no events, to our surprise. History wasn't exactly fun, but our teacher was great. At least he would have been great if he was actually in class today. Naomi Suzu took their seats. Around me, Susan in front of me, Naomi beside me. Before class bell, before the class bell rang, the class was greeted by the dean. Students, you'll be having a uh, substitute uh. for class today. Everyone meet. That was the most boring dean I've ever heard. Miss Diana. Dun dun dun. My heart stopped at the door with the dean was at the door with the dean. I do that every time. Diana was looking over at the students and smirking as her eyes landed on me. She strode to the teacher's desk, ignoring or welcoming the whispers from the other students before sitting on the wooden, but the wooden before sitting on the wood and crossing her legs. Thank you, Dean. You can go now. With a wave of Diana's hand, the dean left the classroom, closed the door, and left the area. Diana smiled at us, making my stomach turn. What was she going to do? So, history, 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 history. It's such a silly thing, isn't it? I mean, what do we care about the past? Where in the present? The rest of the class, including Naomi and Suzu, hesitantly nodded in agreement, unsure about this new teacher, but willing to listen to more of what she had to say. The present is so full <clears throat> of wonderful things. While the labors of the past are the reason we have many things, it is our chance and privilege to utilize what has been given to us. <clears throat> her charm was almost infectious. The class was practically starting to eat out of her hand. I looked around to see classmates grinning and agreeing with Diana. I pressed my lips together as I listened further. I had no choice. What's even funnier about human beings is that some of the bits of history we hear is either made up or completely biased to one side. It's like a story you read as a child. You hear of the princess and the prince and they live happily ever after. But what about the family she left behind? What of her friends? So many fucking notifications. Jesus! The students listened and agreed intently to her words. Z. I could tell, however, that these words were all targeted at me. The original story of the Little Mermaid. A perfect example of biased opinion. Here we have a girl who thinks she can be with this prince. But this prince has to marry a princess. What would happen if the mermaid had her skipping. way? What makes the mermaid so important that the princess has to suffer the consequences? Doesn't matter what happens to the princess. I'm gonna... Fuck you! <laughs> the rest of the class turned their heads to me. Naomi and Suzu looked at me with equally surprised looks. Kept my eyes to Diana. If I was the mermaid, I wasn't going to let the princess take my prince away. Diana stared at me before smiling and turning her body to fully face me. Oh? And why does it not matter? The story isn't about the princess, the story is about the mermaid and the prince. Ah, but that is exactly my point. While the story talks about the mermaid and the prince's <laughs> That's romance, we don't see the problems of the kingdom the prince rules. While we are all fixated with this love story, we ignore out, the fact the kingdom would fall apart without the marriage between the prince and princess. Uh, uh, uh one second. I guess it's okay. I guess the little skipping's gonna have to deal. She kept her eyes to me as she spoke. I knew she wanted to make more words stick in my head, but I didn't listen. It was one thing to be a fictional story. It was another trying to ruin someone's life for selfishness. Diana chuckled and looked back up to the glass. Well, the house. luckily in the real story of the Little Mermaid, the mermaid knows that what she was doing was wrong, and she threw herself into the ocean, turning into sea foam. 
Some of the students that surrounded me mumbled in surprise, obviously not knowing the real story. However, Diana was wrong once again. It's not true, bitch! Uh, bitch! <laughs> once again, the class looked to me and Diana faced me with another smile. Not true? How so? The trade-off for becoming a human was marrying the prince or turning into sea foam. However, she was also given the choice to kill the prince and turn back into a mermaid. The mermaid didn't because she loved him and sacrificed herself for that love. That is a story worth telling. Not some princess getting her way, but of a tragedy that had befallen a girl who only wanted to love. The class applauded me with Suzu giving me her usual punch, on the punch to my shoulder and Naomi smiling at my logic. Diana, however, finally grew an almost angered face at me. Interesting. <clears throat> so what you are saying is that the princess should be given no mind. The story's not about the princess. The story's about the mermaid, and the mermaid should have gotten the prince. Even at the risk of a kingdom falling <clears throat> apart? Even if the entire world fell apart around them, duty does not overrule love, and the princess needs to realize this. The applause that followed that, inti that intensified with whoops and hollers, I felt a wave of confidence roll through my body. Diana wasn't going to win. Wasn't going to let her. Diana then stopped talking and looked at the clock on the wall, reading it quickly. This class had barely begun. Why was she looking at the time? Stop licking yourself! Stupid dog. I need a room where there's no animals. Diana then leaned against the blackboard and smiled to us. I became worried. You know what? School isn't important. Everyone, go ahead and head home. Take the week off. The students suddenly began to chat happily or in confusion of the situation. Many thought it was a dream come true. Others knew better. Before anyone could protest, however, Diana pressed a finger to her lip and counted down with her fingers in the air. Three. A two. A one. The speakers of the classroom gently awoke, giving us an announcement we would never believe. Attention students! Due to an emergency faculty meeting, we will be closing school for the remainder of the day and this entire week. Please leave the school quickly and quietly and have a good rest of the week. <clears throat> she used her powers on them. Damn it. I felt the need to stop her, but how could I stop a demon in the middle of a public area? Diana smiled before registering to the door. Have a nice week off. School will resume next week. Many of the students filed out, chatting to each other about their new impromptu plans. Suzu was beyond happy, but Naomi was hesitant. Before we could pack up and leave, however, Diana stepped into a Excuse me, little miss. I'd like you to stay a little while. There's something we need to discuss. As Diana looked to Suzu and Naomi, she snapped her fingers, making my friends tense up. You two can head home. Don't worry about your friend until next week, okay? If you contact her, she won't reply. So don't bother. If she contacts you, ignore her, because she's just fine. As if on command, Susan and Naomi left the room. <clears throat> I tried to march after them, but Diana stepped in my path, warned me with her eyes that if I followed, there would be hell to pay. I had lost my two friends, at least for a week. Diana and I were alone, just like she wanted. I slammed my hands on the desk in front of me and glared at Diana. What are you doing? What do you think? What? Do I not make a good teacher? I figured you should have a little lesson, so I took matters into my own hands. Whatever you're trying to do, it will work. You really think so, dear? And what makes you so sure about that? What was making me so sure? I was co Why was I confident? Are the boys worth this? My thoughts begin to fill with doubt. All the uncertainties about this whole ordeal begin to cloud my mind. If the boys are ever found out, there'd be hell to pay. Was it worth it? What about Diana? What would she do to me? Would she make my parents forget about me completely? Would she ruin my friends' lives out of spite? In my gut, I felt a stone of confidence try to fight back, but the heaviness of my thoughts began to dissolve the stone little by little. What was going on with me? I looked up to Diana again to see her gaze boring into my eyes. She was using her powers on me. This time, I was away from home so I couldn't escape. Or could I? Did I want to? The way she stared at me made me feel warm and fuzzy inside, inside my chest. I felt like nothing. Dana lifted a hand under my chin and ran a thumb over my lips, licking her own. I could feel little shots of energy zip, zipping from under my skin into her, my chin where she held me. Now, let's have a little taste of that sweet, virginal sexual energy. Oh yeah. It's like a skip to a porno. Yeah! I watched as she leaned in, ready to kiss me and take my energy. Half of my body felt elation at the idea, never half completely rejected it, and I didn't want her to even touch me. Matthew. 
Suddenly, Diana stopped in her tracks. Matthew? Who is... And it dawned on her. Ah, one of the boys. Why don't you tell me which boy is Matthew? Put myself not in compliance. The fourth. There's five. There's five, so he's not the youngest? What? What? Wait. James. Oh, there is four. <laughs> I thought there was five. Wait. No, there is five. Wait. James, Eric, Damien, Matthew, Sam. There is five. What the fuck? Who's... Then who's the youngest? Now I'm curious. Is Damien the youngest? What? That doesn't make sense. <laughs> Diana gave going to reply before letting go of my, to, of my face and stepping back. Really? The child? But... With you? But... But... I nodded once again, but this time it was partly my own decision to reply. Diana let out a sound that mimicked the cat's purr before stepping away from me. Alright, then. <clears throat> well, if it's the fourth son you're infatuated with... You should really rethink your romantic options. I don't wanna! Diana chuckled before kissing my nose where I felt a shot of energy zap out of my body, making me dizzy and recoil. Diana then turned to the desk and sat on the wood crossing her legs. You can go now. Remember, no class for the rest of the week. How am I supposed to get home? My two friends left me here thanks to you. Oh, were they your ride? <laughs> my apologies. Let me help, then. Diana then lifted her hand and snapped her fingers, and suddenly felt the floor sink from underneath me, forcing me to look down, put pentagrams around my feet, pulling me into the ground. Goodbye! It was nice having you. Before I could fight, however, I sank fully into the floor, fading into the darkness and shining my eyes. I opened them, I, f I felt my silk sheets around me, soothing my anxiety from the darkness that I had previously found in me. What the who were? Why did Diana bring me home? Was this an illusion? Was I being tricked? Something was going on. I sat up in bed looking around me. I was indeed in my room. There was no mistake about that. Why? Damn, that's too strange. Was this a game? Was this part of her plan to getting the boys back? I was lost and confused more than ever, despite my logical thought, trying to piece the puzzle that is Diana together. The more I tried to solve her, the less I understood about the situation I was in. I was interrupted, however, by my door suddenly opening, revealing the boys with Damien's hand on the doorknob. Miss, what are you doing here? You should be in school! Aren't you supposed to be in school? Yeah, you know. Who's the youngest in this group? <laughs> Diana sent her back I didn't here. read that. Cause... She invaded her school and sent all the students back home. Whatever. What is that bitch up to? I don't know. Seriously. Diana's playing around for no reason. Maybe it's part of her plan. The boys continue to argue, argue back and forth about Diana. Feeling an almost jealous curiosity in me, Damien seemed to be too deep within the talking to notice my thoughts, but he didn't even stop talking alongside his brothers. Damien looks very conflicted right now. Why was Diana after them? Why did she want to bring them back? What's so important about the boys is she would travel to the human world to get them. What was going on? I decided enough was enough. I needed answers. Yo! Hey! The boy stopped arguing, staring at me in surprise, held my hands and my fist in my lap, mustering the courage to continue to speak despite my abrupt shout. Why is Danny here? Why does she want to bring you all back? What exactly did you run from? Why did you run from it? Miss, we- EXPLAIN! Don't miss me! I need to know what's going on. I won't be left in the dark about this one, I know what I'm facing. The boys looked at each other hesitantly, unsure of what to reply. Finally, Sam pushed Damien towards the bed, making him buckle and land on his knees with his torso over the edge of the mattress. Damien. Do the thing. Do the thing. Do the thing, Damien. The thing. What thing? Sam, you're not suggesting. Why not? She deserves to know everything. Especially if Diana is targeting her. Sam's right. I guess we have no choice then. Let's get it confused. What was Damien about to do? Yep. Rabbit drinking out of bottle. Great! Ah! What's with this? Stop! Damien stood before climbing onto the bed with me, sitting across me with his knees. We're going to show you everything. You have to trust me, okay? The minute you stop trusting me, the vision will stop. Vision? It'll be okay. Just trust him. Look to Matthew and sure what was going on, but I nodded. If this was the only way to learn, then this was my chance to know. 
Damien gently placed his hands on each side of my head, gently pressing his thumbs into the skin, but my eyebrows. I could only stare at Damien as his eyes began to glow gold, and he began to be both pulled out of me and forced into my head. Within seconds, my vision went back once again. I was unsure what Damien was doing, but soon shapes and texture slowly began to appear around me. So I was trying to get the rabbit to stop drinking. I found myself sitting on a stone floor in the middle of what looked like a fancy throne room. Where am I? I looked down at myself to stand only to see my body as translucent as a ghost. Translucent. Translucent as a ghost. Whoa! I jumped up and inspected my hands in sudden panic. I was see-through. Cool! Why, what was going on? How dare they try to negotiate with me? How dare? Do they not know whom they speak to? Oh. I gasped and ran behind a nearby pillar away from the voice. The sound of his anger and words frightened every bone in my body, turning me into a frightened child. My lord, please calm yourself. Calm yourself, my lord! Calm? They're merely testing my resolve. I have more than half of a mind to send my greatest armies to take what should be mine. They are mere insects in the way of my kingdom's expansion. They merely asked for a marriage joining. They merely ask for love. So I'm to bow to them and share my land that I have so rightfully conquered? Jesus. I peeked from behind a pillar to see a large demon covered in royal clothes. But buff enough to be a military commander. His rage practically emanated from his body as he growled at a servant. They are willing to give their land to you, sire. All they ask is for one of your sons to marry their daughter, whom I might add is as beautiful as can be. You do have five of them. This is ridiculous! To suggest that I need their approval to take their land is beyond insanity. Wow. What makes them think I care about their precious daughter? You're a real asshole. Did I mention that she is a prodigy of her kind, sire? A prodigy? Yes, my lord. This succubus is a master of her skills in magic and mind manipulation. She is said to sway armies with a snap of her fingers, despite being as young as she is. Impossible! Impossible. If only it were, sire. This succubus is dangerous, but would be a great asset to have should we agree to this arrangement. The only reason she cannot phase you, my lord, is because you are the strongest demon in the plains. Is this supposed to change my mind? <laughs> yes, my lord. Fearing. You are doing a terrible job at convincing me. My apologies, sire. I was lost. I could tell they were talking about Diana, but why? Father. Aww. I quickly, oh, I quickly turned my head to see another demon who looked like a mere child, staring at the demon commander on the throne. Father. Ah, uh, Raystrow. Raystrow. Have you finished your training? God, I hate that name. Yes, father. Then what do you want? Boy. I want to be with my brothers the best of the day, father. The demon commander walked to the young demon and gripped his hair, picking him off the ground and forcing him to look up at, at his snarl. The young demon, however, looked unfazed. Huh. Arrogance. Why should I allow you to be with them? I should kill you for your lack of respect to me. Because I want to be with them, father. I can only stare as the young demon faces the father. Despite the massive difference between them, the young demon seemed weaker and easy to kill versus the demon commander. Why would this man kill his son, though? Was this commander that ruthless? However, I was, wasn't expecting him to laugh and release the young demon. <laughs> Good! Assertive even in the face of danger! That is why you are my favorite son. Jesus. I can only stare wide as the commander placed his hand on the demon's shoulder. Very well. Go. Tomorrow, you will show me your training. Little, little demon grinned widely before running off. I have a thought. I had a dream. Yes, my lord? How old is this daughter? As old as your fifth sire. Who's the fifth? <laughs> Is it Damien? Oh my gosh! Do you believe this proposal is worth it? Yes, sire. Tell those insects that they are safe for now. I will consider their offer. Sire, are you certain? Don't make me change my mind. Can I stutter? Now go! The demon servant quickly ran off, but as soon as he passed the pillar I was hiding behind, he along with the commander vanished into thin air. What the hey? 
What happened? I didn't get the time to try to figure that out before a demon who looked around my age walked into the room reading a book. Is that... Please, Trow. Oh. Your nose is stuck in those books. Will you not lift your head up from them once in a while? That voice. Circled around the pillow to see a second demon, leaning against another pillar, smirking at Raystra. Aren't you supposed to be with your mother practicing the harpsichord? I am, but I had a feeling that you were in danger. In danger? What are you- ATTACK! Jesus! All of a sudden, three shadows zipped through the room and slammed into Raystro, forcing him to fall to the ground and drop his book. As the sight cleared for me, there were three other demons in the dog pile with Raystro on the bottom. It's- Ah! Oh! No way! You haven't had a break in months from those stupid butts! It's time for punishment! Okay, it's him. <laughs> Death by brotherhood! Ah! No more reading! No more reading! <laughs> I told you that you were in danger. Fuck. <clears throat> I suddenly knew who these demons were. It's the boys! Even, the de even in the demon world, their brotherly connection was astounding. They were merely younger versions of themselves. One of the demons, who I assumed was Matthew, grabbed the book from the floor and opened it, reading it mockingly. How can you read this, Racero? It's all about war strategy! It's boring! I have to, Zakaru! Get it off! There's only one thing you need to know about strategy. Kill them all. Take no prisoners. War. You sound just like father. <laughs> I couldn't help but giggle. It was cute to see them acting childish with each other. Eventually, James managed to push his brothers off of him and stand brushing himself off. You all are reckless. At least we have fun. It's true. You haven't been with us in weeks. Don't you think it's time for a break? I'm sure father won't mind. You sure got that boy. I have to. I know you want to, Ray Shut the fuck up. <laughs> what is going on here? I shot my head to the voice to see the commander, aged a little, staring at the boys with his arms crossed to his chest. Demon quickly dashed and hid behind Sam, peeking over his shoulder to see a large commander. Nothing is going on. We <clears throat> just passed by each other. Yeah, that's what it looks like. Then why does your brother have your book? I was showing him what I was learning, Father. Return to your studies, Ray Stroud. Uh, the rest of you out of my sight. Oh, that Do irks disturb me. disturb your brother again. That irks me so bad. I could only stare as James gently took his book and, without looking at his brothers, returned to his reading. The commander walked past the remaining brothers, growl uh, yeah, growling at Sam and Damon before leaving the room. What was up with that? Don't worry about it. We'll find a way to get him back. I don't know. He's on a very tight leash. Hmm. Hmm. Ezra, you're quiet. What did you hear? He's going to a negotiation meeting. He's going to arrange a marriage. A marriage? For who? It must be for one of us. He hasn't decided who will marry her. It's a girl from a kingdom he wants to take over. But that's uncharacteristic of him. Usually he'd just attack with the army. Whatever the case is, one of us is getting married. I hope it isn't me. <laughs> what about Ray Strau? He's the eldest. It would make sense, but having a succubus marrying one of us means that she'll be practically married to all of us. You know what practically means? She's your sister-in-law. Well, what should we do? Before the conversation could continue, the boys vanished into thin air, fading into different colored mist. They were replaced by an older Damien and Matthew sitting with each other in the middle of the throne room. Hey, you boys! Think we should? Yes. I really want to. I want to as well. Still, it'll be hard to convince Raystero since he's the one about to be married and he's the favorite. We don't know that, Zakeru. Maybe she's set to marry you. <laughs> no way! I don't want to get married! Girls have cuties! I don't think you'll have a problem with that baby face of yours. Ha. Ha ha ha. Looked over to see Sam join the duo, crossing his arms and raising a, 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 an eyebrow to his, at his what brother. What are you two talking about? We got into contact with the human world again. Come on, Ezreal. You give humans too much attention. No way! You gotta listen! They apparently have stores and books ah! and schools and stuff! Oh, God. So what? It's full of humans who piss on each other for no reason. They're no better than the devil spawn. Nuh-uh! The one we were talking to wasn't like that! Will you lay the fuck down? Thank you. How do you know, Sekeru? 
Because I do! What is going on here? They want to go to the human world. The human world? Reishiro, think about it! You won't have to marry that girl and be the heir anymore! You could be with us, and we can make lives for ourselves in the new world! Now you're just talking nonsense! I vote that we do it! Where'd you come from, God? Huh? Oh, not you two. Think about it. This may be our chance to finally get away from this political nonsense we're stuck in. We may be nobles, but we're still our own beings. <sighs> Ristro is in. God damn it. What? Azrael! Whoa! So how do we get there? Are you kidding me? You don't even know how we'd get there. A simple spell should work. But it would require someone from the human world to help us get there. We can ask him! Him. Oh, he'd definitely help us. Stop! <laughs> Fucking I'm, animals. I'm not so sure about... Reistra, aren't you tired of pleasing father all of the time? I'm tired of that name. I am, but... If you stay, you'll be married off and become ruler of father's kingdom. You'll have no time for yourself or with us, and you'll be constantly at war with the other realms for power. You'll most likely turn into the spitting image of Father. <sighs> what he's saying is get your head out of your ass and let's go. If you don't say yes, I'll drag your princely ass with us. I don't care what that bastard of a father wants. Come on, Reistero! All right, yes, let's man. do this. How tiny What's the plan? Matthew's horns are. They're so cute. I couldn't believe what it was. What was happening? I've seen the history of their lives before my eyes. They were nobles, and James was the heir to the kingdom. The commander ruled even more so. He was going to be married to Diana. They sacrificed everything to leave and be together. They'd rather be free than remain in their noble roles. I started to feel jealous. They were able to leave while I was still expected to be what my father wanted me to be. How they were able to leave was uncertain still, but I knew that I would learn in time. I closed my eyes and mentally asked Damien to end the vision. As soon as I asked, the world around me slowly vanished and I was brought back to the bedroom where I sat with my head nestled in Damien's hands. Phew!